Good morning, happy Saturday, everybody. Wall Street Jesus here. Saturday sweep series in the, well, I guess we could say not the start of earnings season, but getting into the heart of earnings season. Uh, we got some big, big names reporting this week. Uh, we were just about uh, quite a few of them. And, you know, it, it, it interesting setup here. Um, and hold on one second. I got beeping. Do you guys hear beeping by chance? You hear any beeping in the background? No? I just don't. Hold on. All right. I can mute it. All right. Uh, sorry about that. Because I hear constant beeping. It's annoying the daylights out of me. And I wanted to just uh, mute it. You guys hear me okay still? I didn't mute you guys. I still hear beeping. Bear with me one second. Where's the beeper coming from here? Hold on. All right. Yeah, if it wasn't annoying me, I would just ignore it, but it's constant. All right, so like I said, we're going into the heart of earnings season here, so it creates a really nice setup. Um, we got the banks out of the way. That's a good thing, okay? And you guys... My feelings about earnings in general, it's it's such a crap. Uh, not only getting the number right, but reaction from the street off that number. Okay, because so many things factor in. Um, all the way up till they, they actually report the number. You know, you got to factor in where the market is at that current given time, you know. Um, what's the temperament of the market? There's has there all of a sudden selling pressure and they everything out there, or are you know is it risk on mode and people are just looking to buy up everything? Uh, you got to take into account how much uh, and name how how big of a run it's you know has had prior to the number, um, and then you got even. After they report the number, the comp mentioned on the conference call, guidance. Uh, I gave you guys a story in the past about Facebook um, back in the day when I, before this, I was on Twitter and Facebook had some decent call buying the day of earnings. So some people rolled it into earnings. The stock was up big off the, off the number, okay? Make a long story short, I went home, ate some dinner. I go, I put on, I turn on my screen, Facebook's getting killed now. And I said, what the hell's going on? Their teenage usage was down. It was mentioned in the conference call. So my point being, so many different intangibles that go into it, uh, it's just so hard to predict. Okay, the smartest minds, you got guys breaking down fundamentals, they can't predict it. So the first thing I stress to everybody, um, especially members that come looking for that earnings flow um, to try to get an edge in this game. You always take a flow that's tied to earnings with a grain of salt, okay? You can play earnings. Some people enjoy playing earnings, but just know that you are gambling, okay? It's a crapshoot. You, if you're okay with what, you, you know, the options, they're going to zero. If you're okay with that, then more to it. You know, that's fine. Go ahead. Enjoy it. Um, as far as holding equity into earnings, unless it's a longer term investment or trade, I mean, I wouldn't feel comfortable because I can't manage my risk. You know, so as long as you understand and have some sort of at least guidelines behind playing earnings, uh, you know, I give the wrong impression that if you enjoy playing earnings, you should never play earnings. And that's not for me to tell you. You know, maybe you have some sort of risk management strategy that you apply and you can, and it allows you to find success. But if you don't and you're trying to um, find consistent consistency in this game just off earnings, it's tough. All right. Um, but like we said, we all enjoy it. All right. We're at the general blood, so I understand it. Okay, so I just, I wanted to clear that up because I know a lot of people, uh, and sometimes I give the wrong impression. 
I don't play earnings personally. Uh, I try to stay, you know, I stay completely aware away from it uh, because of all the reasons I just mentioned to you. All right, so we go in now and we got to understand there's been quite a run in a lot of these things. All right, um, I just mentioned before we got started a couple of names I was looking at as far as the big names uh, that are. So you have names like um, Google. Uh, Caterpillar, McDonald's, Intel, Boeing, Visa, Microsoft, okay? You pull up charts on any of these things. We were just looking at Boeing. You know, look at this thing. A complete animal. All right? So it is not to say that it can't go higher. A lot of these things are priced to perfection, but look at like PayPal. Now, PayPal went higher off the number, right? And you know what that chart looks like? So that's had you know a ton of act on the way to go higher. Um, but the odds are against you when you had this type of move because a lot of the good stuff is already factored in. We saw that with Netflix. All right. Personally, I think the edge in a lot of these things, especially off flow, is playing the run-up. A lot of times you get a run-up. Like when everybody, listen, Netflix, I hate to call anything easy money, all right, but two things that were going on with Netflix before earnings. One, everybody already had in the back of their head the, the last quarter where nobody had Netflix exposure, remember, and it had that huge gap up, all right, so everybody was already preparing this quarter to make sure they owned some Netflix going into that number. And then when you saw the sweep reactivity pick up to confirm that that momentum was there, you had a high probability set up in these things, as long as the market was okay, and it was, um, that you were going to get some sort of move into the number. Okay? So my opinion is that's where the edge is, off flow especially, in my opinion. Okay? If you think Netflix is going to have a decent quarter, Sweeper activity confirming that, meaning that there will be momentum in that strategy, in that play. You can play the move up until the numbers, and why not, you know, take a chunk off and leave a runner through if you're optimistic about the number. And this way you don't you don't get hurt. You know, yeah, of course, you're going to be kicking yourself if you, know, you get, I mean, paper. When you get a PayPal gap up and you wish you had a whole position. But at least you play with the house's money. And as long as you're going into the crapshoot with some of the house's money, you're ahead of the game. All right, so my favorite strategy um, as far as playing off earnings flow and just earnings in general. All right, and I, I don't like chasing names, period, let alone chasing them into – you know, an earnings report into an event. So that's that's the problem uh, we face, all right? And uh, you guys heard me say this uh, before. This is why I wanted this topic uh, to be solely around earnings as far as this webinar co is concerned. You can't, I, I don't take all the earnings flow out there and weigh it the same way I would flow that's not earnings related. All right, in the simple English, what I mean by that is, I'll give you an example, okay? Here's a perfect example. And it doesn't always work out this way, but I'll just give you an example of how I treat this stuff and how I look at it, okay? And that's one thing you guys can understand, all right? I, I know a lot of you guys who are members uh, who hop on here pretty much understand it, but those of you who are not, all right, and I'm not saying I got some secret source or anything like that. But just like in uh, technicals, you know, for those of you who are looking at charts or anything else for that matter, every trader, every person trying to interpret that information, internally. okay, what I'm getting at, just because somebody on Twitter or just because you see some call buyer on Thinkorswim, okay, don't automatically assume that it's something that I would play or I would bless in a sense. 
Okay, I've been I've been running into that uh, problem a lot, and and especially during earnings season, there's a lot of earnings flow that I simply ignore, totally ignore. Okay, so I just wanted to get that across. Um, you've probably seen me comment on that as far as Twitter is concerned. And there's a lot of a lot of people out there trying to pretend like they can read flow, and they're just looking at simple scanners, and they think every call buyer means something or every call buyer or put buyer should be treated the same way, right? If ask and it's greater than open interest, then it's actionable. And that couldn't be further from the truth, all right? I wouldn't waste as much time as I put into this if it was just that easy. All right, so here's an example of how I like to look at the earnings flow and the difference between earnings related action and non earnings related action okay so you can look at this here to start off all right this is a simple tweet off the private twitter this is the private twitter uh to steam room and there was action this past week for being earnings season there was a lot of buying okay and granted there was some etf put buying as well which makes sense but there was a lot of buying in names now that irritates me a little bit because like i mentioned to you a lot of the stuff out there is reporting earnings so most of the call buying is going to capture that underlying earnings date and if it does that all of instantly it takes a grade down in my book okay but when you see names that catch that aggressive activity okay during earnings season and it's not tied to earnings then that could be something special does it make sense okay if we're seeing if we're in the heart or the start of earnings season and everything that's being bought on the call and put side is catching earnings dates as they should okay you got people hedging protecting speculating all sorts of shit going on during earnings season um but you get action and names that have no ties to earnings that's where i start to take a second look and look a little deeper okay and try to get an idea of what's going on um within the flow i'll keep a close eye on the name see if it catches additional action or sometimes even just the orders itself that particular time on that particular day is enough and worthy of a trade all right so on this day we had a rare day in this heart of earnings season where we had three names that caught my eye and all the three best flow names on the day were not earnings related you don't you don't understand how rare that is at a point in time that we are in now okay and it happened to be these particular names oop what the hell i forgot this was touch screen i'm banging on my screen MTN, Adobe, and WRK. Okay, not to get into the details of it, but those three names had, in my opinion, aggressive activity that had nothing to do with earnings. Adobe doesn't report till December. It was catching October, November aggressive activity. Okay, they could have very easily just went out another month to catch earnings. They did not. For me, again, that, that catches my eye, all right? MTN, same thing. They opened the largest position of open interest, but it didn't catch earnings like a lot of the action. That caught my eye. And then this WRK, it wasn't anything um, huge, but caught a good-looking bet that expired at the end of the week and had nothing to do with earnings. Okay, so it could have been possibly a lot of times it could be a playoff, another name in the sector, you know, right? That makes sense. Like, in other words, if a big chip semiconductor is reporting, a lot of times they may play, you know, the peer names, names in that group to try to get exposure. So that's where you got to do a little bit of homework to try to figure out what's going on. All right. But Adobe, the MTN in particular, stood out uh, because it was special activity there. All right, and here's a glance of the Adobe action you can see here. All right, 
Um, you guys remember probably for the past two webinars we were talking about that Adobe Sweeper, this one, right? You guys remember this one? Half a million dollar sweep. Uh, so Adobe already was a play that a lot of members were in off that sweep. So here you have um, down here. Okay, so you had this nice pull. Let me see if I can blow this up a little bit. There you go. All right, so you can see here, this is where the action came in, off this pull. And then you had a nice little move here higher. All right, you guys see that. So that was the Adobe initial bet here. Is this it? No, this is not it. This is the second bet. Hold on one second. This goes a little bit. Hold on, bear with me. I just want to, again, show you guys exactly how the – and, you know, I go back in these things not to show you guys winners, but to show you how they played out. You understand? That's the most important thing. Not that a stock went higher or how much it went higher by, but how they came after it, how it, how it played out. That's what's important in my eyes. So here it was, 926, okay, you had this October sweeper, which this is the one we spoke about uh, for a couple weeks. Okay, almost a half a million dollar sweep, big sweep, comes into October. Okay, then what happened was we had a pullback. I mean, the stock had a nice move. Okay, so here it is. Stock had a nice rally, right? Worthy enough of a trade, profitable trade. A lot of people sold it. Okay, then you had this little pullback. So now, ideally, what do you want to see for this pullback to set up another entry in Adobe? Okay, and that's what I tell you guys and members a lot of times. If you miss this Adobe initial run off that sweep, don't chase it. Wait for a pullback or some consolidation and see if they come back after it to support the name. So here you got a little profit taking, and what do they do? They come back and support the name. But look at the way they come back to support the name. They didn't just come in and hit it once, right? This would be worthy in itself, right? A half a million dollar sweep. So this is bigger than the initial sweeper, less time than the initial sweeper, because this is October. So this was worthy of a bounce play already, right? And this is what it looked like um, as far as contract amount, 3000 He paid a buck. So what happens the next day? The next day, we get more selling, okay? Adobe had a nice bounce intraday. I traded it. I day traded it. In other words, um, off the sweep, it had a tradable bounce if you were a day trader, okay? But what happened was the next day, it sold off and broke the initial day's lows. Okay, so it went lower. You don't always see them come back the next day. So they, the next day, they come back, right? So that was the 16th. Here's the 17th. And somebody opens another. I bet. This one, November's. This is what it looked like. All right, so you, you see the logic there? Do you, there Again, it has nothing to do with Adobe exploding and why we're going back looking at this. But this is why the Adobe action was significant. Only in flow itself, it had nothing to do with earnings, nothing. None of this action catches Adobe earnings. So it's given the impression that whoever this is, whatever group this is, they wanted to own Adobe, and it had nothing to do with their December quarter. All right? And then, obviously, the rest is history. Um, you know, they were sweeping into strength and after the gap up and so on. Um, but that that's being patient, waiting for that type of activity during earnings season. You know, it's a lot easier than rolling the dice into, 
you know, Facebook earnings. That's where all the retail money is. That's where all the enjoyment they think is. But this stuff gets ignored, and this is where the edge and flow is. Earning season, you have to sit around and wait for this this stuff because it's it's rare, right? I pretty much stated that. It's extremely rare. A lot of the flow catches earnings. But it's well worth it. Well worth it. All right. The MTN, you talk about um, on their own, and well, a couple members, but more, I'll be honest with you, more members, people who actually pay a membership to the Steam Room don't own this MTN. And we spent literally a whole recap the day of activity, the day the order went off, talking about how significant the MTN action was. So this is what happened in MTN. This bet here in a name that doesn't catch any activity, all right? You had an opening bet. They opened the largest position of open interest. Very unusual, obviously and had nothing to do with the uh, numbers. And you do a little homework, you know, and for my, me, homework, you know, there's not too much involved it's looking at what the company does and numbers and all that stuff, but it just happens to be in the hottest group on the street, maybe the most underappreciated group on the street, hotel, leisure, resorts, these things have been flying missiles for how long now? You guys all remember the ILG and what happened there, right? Timeshares? Yeah, they're ready to get bought any day now. It's only a matter of time. But they started buying the ILG back here. It's been huge. Remember the WYN, Wyndham? Huge. Marriott, we all know. Incredible move. Throughout. Okay? So here you have a name that's in the group, never catches activity, right in the heart of earnings season, and catches the biggest bet it's ever caught with no ties to earnings. Right, so you, you look at the stock now, and like the Adobe, which is off a rally, you don't want to chase. Hey, you don't want to chase. Nobody wants to chase right now. You're looking for maybe a pullback, some consolidation. Adobe, you had a pullback, right? MTN, been hot. Finally, a pullback. Find a, found a bottom, and look where they come in, guys. You know, look where they came in. So, you know, this already, and again, this is not Adobe, right? This is not a name that caught news and exploded to the upside, this just happened to be a nice short-term trade, high probability trade, in my opinion, according to what I look at, or flow, where you had nothing to do with worrying about the risk of earnings. Now, this was up six, I think, Friday. Uh, the WRK, I don't know what the options did here on this WRK. Um, had a nice move too, but hard to tell. The market helped. You know, you could, who knows. Um, but this WRK had only a couple of days and pushed higher through those couple of days. But again, the reason why I mentioned that WRK, it was not related to earnings. Part of the three best bets on that particular day. So you know, that's the stuff I like to look for personally. Um, in regards to earnings season, especially if I'm swing trading. Now, you're not going to, you're going to have to ignore a lot of flow. You're going to have to sit around and wait for opportunities like this to come around. And not only that, you've got to be willing to fire when they come around. You know, a lot of people might have been patient enough to wait for this type of action, but when they saw MTN and it's not a symbol that they're familiar with, you know, fire. All right, that's, I'm sure that was one of the reasons. Or Adobe, you know, they're not a big fan of Adobe. Honestly, I don't know. I can't find a legitimate excuse not to play the Adobe, but 
I'm sure there are, people have their reasons. So, and here's the thing too, uh, not to go into rambling into a rant again, I just, I realize these things more and more since I've been in the steam room because I'm around a lot of different traders, not just people who, you know, trade books and manage money, but actual, you know, people trading their own account. Not not a lot of traders are interested in this stuff. If you go around and ask traders, are you interested in just making money? Are you interested in just finding consistency, success? Is that the most important thing on your mind? A lot of traders will tell you yes, but they're not being honest with themselves. You know, they're not being honest with themselves because my next question would be, are you willing to play what you need to play to find success. Are you willing to be patient enough and for setups where you'll find a higher probability of success? So they can talk all they want and say yes, but sitting around not looking at Fang every single day is not an easy thing for them to do. They get more enjoyment in, you know, trading Netflix, Facebook, Google, and Baba every single day. But it's not likely you're going to find an edge every single day. You know, we see like, for example, NVIDIA. You know, we see NVIDIA sweepers literally every single day. And, you know, the stock has been incredible. The stock has been incredible. You know, but what what do you need? Like, where's your edge here now? What are you looking to do? If you're telling me you're going to scalp NVIDIA intraday and stuff like that, especially if it's weak because the name has been so strong, there's a high probability you're going to bounce, especially off. That's one thing. But as far as if you're a position trader, swing trader, what do you NVIDIA now? So in other words, you bought NVIDIA here, sold it here, you buy it higher here, sold it higher here, buy it. You know what I mean? People playing the same names over and over and just continuously going up the ladder, as I like to call it. I don't see the edge in that. You know, I don't see the edge in NVIDIA, especially if you didn't play it all the way up to now, looking to buy it here and hold it into earnings. Of course, NVIDIA could have a blowout quarter and be up huge. But there's no edge in that. You have no edge in that. Nobody has an edge in that. You know, you're looking to speculate, gamble, and have some fun, right? That's why you're playing that. So it goes back to my point. You know, you ask a lot of traders to be honest with themselves, and they may say, or they may truly believe they want to make money in this game, but they're not willing to do the things that they need to do to make money in this game. And every time I come across, okay, and it's no secret source, okay, I, I'm the first one to tell you that. It's not a crystal ball. But any time I come across any individual trader who didn't have success trading off flow, it's always the same names. It's always the same names they lose money on. Always. It's always the same group of names. You know, it's almost like they they want they want sweepers before the sweepers even come. You know, they're looking for any sign. I get that all day long. Like, uh, geez, I post, and those of you who are in the steam room know, I talk about. I put pretty much as much activity as is humanly possible. Okay. I'm looking for sweepers nibbling into an underlying to try to be early on some things. And I still get a ton of people ask me, did you see anything in this? Did you see anything in this? Did you see anything in this? Now think about that logically. They know that if I saw anything that was actionable, I would have mentioned it already. They know that, but they're just looking for an excuse 
to buy that name before the action is even there, rather than letting the action come to them. So it's it's fascinating, you know? But that's, it is what it is. And again, it all comes down to if you're finding success and you're content and you're happy, you've been consistent with your results, you know, you're being honest with yourself, you're in a good spot, then there's nothing to worry about there. Keep doing what you're doing. But if you're not finding the success you would like to find, you got to be honest with yourself and figure out what you're doing wrong and stop doing it. And earnings could be, <clears throat> or earnings related stuff could be one of the main problems that you have. Or staring at the same names, wanting action in the same names, just because you like those names, just because everybody else you know about is talking about those names. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm me personally. I, I'm sick of Fang. I'm, I, I. If the market gods could hear me right now, the ideal situation set up out of this earning season would be these Fang high beta names go into underperformance. You know, no crash. I'm just talking about underperforming everything else. We're already starting to see some signs of that, and. The main focus, the big rotation goes into everything else, right? It's kind of been the opposite of that for a while. All the attention's been in Fang. Fang has held the market together. All the high beta, that's been everybody's bread and butter. So a switch of that trend would be huge. And you know why else it would be huge? Sentiment-wise, nobody's going to get behind, as far as retail money, no one's getting behind a rally without those things involved. No way. That's, that's right now, that's retail's barometer on how the market's doing. What's Fang doing? You get, you know, the market's strong, and the rest of the market is soaring, but Fang is not doing much and you'll have people calling the market chop. The Dow's up 150, and they're calling the market choppy because Fang is choppy. So that's what I would love to see, I think would be the best thing for this market. Um, you know, maybe a rally focused fully around IWM with, you know, the financials that have been incredible, some small caps, some other things out there um, that have been neglected. And, you know, going into um, the start of earnings season, you know, we've been talking on here, if you remember how the underbelly of tech was where the sweet spot might be, right? It's not um, Facebook and all that stuff. You know, this, this stuff is fried in my eyes. Ton of sweepers, going higher, everybody's eyeballs are on them. You know, if you guys remember, we were discussing a couple weeks back how the underbelly of tech, the Adobe's, the SK, remember that one? New highs. The CRM, which I wish would catch more action. I think that's where the opportunity was. Yeah, so, again, we'll, we'll see what happens. Part now, you guys heard this as well. Post-earnings flow is the complete opposite of earnings flow. It's the most important flow, in my opinion. I'll give you an idea of where the money may be initially starting to shift to. Um, so this is a big week. A lot of big names reporting. Uh, we'll get that out of the way. The banks already have reported, and how about them banks? Oh, my God. Flow is incredible. They look incredible. You know, there's the Morgan Stanley. Just every bit of weakness gets soaked up. It's a, it's amazing. It's amazing. J.P. Morgan.
we're playing um, not this week, next week. So what are those? The November third, one o five. They were playing um, early to midweek this past week. One o five. They're cheap chibis, um, and they've been doing that a lot. You know. And some of that cheap out of the money stuff, but around a lot of quality. Uh, if you guys remember, this was the bet, and there was other action prior to it, but in my opinion, this was the bet in JP Morgan. Let me move this out of the way. So if you are a, a swing trader, you know, we went over that last week, you're looking to hold more than a couple days type thing. Uh, this was perfect, perfect for you. Uh, I think we looked at this together last week as well. We might have looked at this in the past. I can't remember what the hell I look at. Uh, where is it? I should just go by dollar amount because it was the biggest one on here. It was in September, right? Oh, here it is. Uh, yeah, so we might have sp spoke about this. Um, in weeks past, so back on 1016. Oh no, this is not it. Hold on, a nice bet there. You can see one and a half million, but that's not it. Bear with me. Here it is. Okay, hold on. All right, so you can see prior to that. Yeah, some put action. So here's where the flow looks to be changing a little bit of trend. On 8:23, late August, you get a March call sweeper, 1.1 million. Uh, there was more added to that. The significance of this order, even though they were March, right? You see March here. He's got some time. This order swept every single exchange possible to get filled. 15 different exchanges. So that was what I like to call an Uzi fire. Yeah, so that's, that's a perfect bet as we've been, you know, we were talking a little bit about last week. If you're... A swing trader that likes to hold and go out a couple months and you now you're looking for that higher reward right the risk reward thing you know you need time the more reward you want to see the more time you need if you're an options player you got to drill that in your head um, because if you're looking to size up you're not going to do it in weeklies you'll get demolished you now weeklies and bi-weeklies you want to put a little bit of money in and hope, you know, you could get that quick hit, make some money. You're not looking to size up in weeklies. So this is the, um, you know, the risk-reward type play if you're a swing trader and want to go out a couple months, that March bet. And we, we've been seeing a lot of that. We've been seeing a lot of leap type stuff um, in the financial uh, financials, Jans. What about uh, Bank of America? I mean... The December 25s, initially, 150,000 plus bought at the start. Well, not the start of this move. It already started, but um, right when the flow started to really heat up. And, you know, since then, nothing. I mean, look at the sweeper activity. When, when Bank of America gets hot, it's like somebody is leaning on the buy button and just continues to sweep all day long. Bank of America, there's nothing like Bank of America flow um, when Bank of America is hot. So, you know, and this Bank of America, like I said, didn't come as early as you would like, but these banks had a little juice prior to that. It came, I think, around here. And they just haven't stopped since. And they've been buying all this. You know, you had this pull didn't last too long. Yeah, you Ideal situation, you had this hang out here a little bit, but the demand for these things has just been crazy, crazy. Um, and Morgan Stanley, 
you know, I was telling you guys, Bank of America catches a ton of more action than Morgan Stanley. City catches action. JP Morgan. Morgan Stanley doesn't catch a lot of flow, a lot of sweeper activity. But for some reason, this go around, they made it their business to own a decent chunk of this Morgan Stanley. Don't ask me why. You know, I, I don't know the reasons. You could see, you know, there's this is a lot of action for Morgan Stanley. Bank of America trades all this in one day. You know, they're showing an interest. That's that's basically what it, what it tells me is that unlike times in the past where Bank of America, I mean Morgan Stanley, wouldn't catch much flow, they had an interest in owning uh, Morgan Stanley. If you remember um, Citigroup, you remember earlier rally out of this. Um, no, before that, as this rally, Citigroup was their favorite. You know, flow to name wise, Citigroup <clears throat> was one. They kept coming after. Uh, Citigroup still catching action, not as much, you know, as it did in the past, but still catching action and um, probably will catch up. You know, Citigroup was ahead of them all. Then there was a downgrade, so now it's been lagging some of them. That'll catch up. Uh, Goldman has had some flow. I know a lot of you guys like to trade Goldman. Um, Goldman rarely catches size. You usually got to keep a close eye on some under the radar type sweepers. And there were a couple of them. There were a couple of them. Uh, some further out stuff. I know you guys like Goldman. Hold on. Yeah, sometimes there's bank rallies and Goldman doesn't catch any flow. That's the problem. Uh, so that was pre-earnings. Here was uh, one here recently, the 240s, April. Like, look at that wood. $13.75. Uh, then you had these 240s, small sweep. A lot, of, a lot of the Goldman stuff looks like this, the action. Small sweep. I'm up a little bit. Um, that was October's that expired the week. I'm looking for stuff further than that. Here's some November's, not a bad looking sweep. November 35's, 790. This was Friday, I think. Yeah, I caught a couple Friday. Here's another one, 250 of the November 40's. So you see, all the sweeps look like that. So Goldman has had some flow. I know I get that question a lot. All right, and you had a little bit of a pause there. Um, again, it's tough for me to get super excited here. It's not initial activity. A lot of them had had runs. Like I said, City, Goldman, you had a little bit of a pull, so they look a little bit better. Um, but at least it's post earnings action. And it tells us that, these, again, I think we, we had an idea of this already based off the floor. The banks, don't ignore these banks. You always have to keep an eye on these banks, especially when they pull back, even more so, even more so. All right, because that could be where the money's at uh, quite a bit. Um, what else did I want to mention before I start getting into uh, some of your names um, oh, you know what? Let's just quickly look at some of the Friday action uh, before you guys hit me up with your stuff. Hang on. Let me give you an idea. This is some of the um, some of the call action. You can see. I mean, the buying, and that's a, that was another pain in the ass thing for me. The buying lately, again, there's put action in ETFs. That's where the put action is. That's where all the protection is. And the buying of names has been absurd this week. But because of earnings, we couldn't even get a gauge on whether they were anticipating a market move or, you know, it's earnings flow. That's the problem. Um, but here's some of the uh, big size action uh, for Friday. Uh, Tava, that, what a piece of garbage that thing is, caught a big bet. 
Jan 15s. So a lot of time there. Buck 39. Avon. Do you believe it? Avon. That thing's still around. Avon had heavy spec action. They have earnings. So, yeah. Take this with a grain of salt. But Avon, I think, was like 30,000 November's bought up. AVP is the symbol there. It's two and a half bucks. Cheap. You know, cheap. Ten cents. X. Huge order in X. They have earnings. Uh, Jim is saying AVP may be an emerging, emerging market play now. Possibly. Uh, Jim, me personally... Because of earnings, I can't get junked up about it. You know, I can't get junked up. I mean, they're going to be cheap no matter what these calls because it's a $2 stock. If there wasn't earnings, I would take a second look. But because of earnings, I can't. I just can't get junked up. Um, X uh, could catch big time bets. We know that. Uh, this one was big. Earnings, again. Uh, CZR, this is an interesting name, too. A lot of action in this CZR. Now, some of the big size action in CZR has been stock replacement, but there's been some clean action in between. So I don't know if you guys follow the name, uh, but something to keep maybe an eye on. There is some buying. I looked at the chart late last week. I like this. Hold on. What did I do here? Oh, I'm on the uh, questions. I like this. Right, so I like you had a move, actually had some flow, had a nice move or flow, um, more of the unusual under the radar type flow. Here it's been catching some big time blocks. Like I said, a lot of it tied, but some of it clean, and you got to off a pullback here. So something maybe if you're interested in the name to keep an eye on. Caesar's Entertainment, CZR. Hold on, where am I here? Uh, guys, I'm not ignoring you. I'll get to your question in a second. I'm lost already, as you can see. You can see here. Um, Qualcomm had some action. Might have been rolled. I don't remember that, but I'm sure that catches earning. Bank of America, we spoke about. Uh, here's a little more Avon. Um, Microsoft, there was some big-time calls being rolled out. Uh, this was in October, bet expiring Friday. Uh, but some big-time action rolled out in Microsoft, I think, to December, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, FSM, that's a silver name. More Avon. eBay. Uh, could a Fed bet? Decent size, 5,000. A lot of action, man. Uh, here's another one. Boyd catches, action, uh, catches earnings but has seen some flow. BYD. But this comes at higher levels. They just bought this thing a couple days ago, a week ago, and it comes at higher levels here. So Boyd, you know, I wouldn't chase. You guys know how I feel about that. Uh, what else was there? Oh, and TXN, which catches earnings, Texas Instruments. Have you looked at that stock lately? Have you looked at TXN lately? My goodness. Jim, pull up that TXN. <laughs> when did this happen? I saw it, it. It caught a sweeper, and I looked at it, and I was like, oh, you know, this has had a nice move. When did this happen? This just happened like this? Nobody's even talking about this name. Look at This is Texas Instruments, guys. This is a big name. And, and look, this is just a beautiful thing. I don't know how to draw on my um, chart yet in this thing, but this is, you see this here, this consolidation, long consolidation. You know what this did to retail money? You know how many retail traders try to catch the breakout and probably got demolished in this thing? Okay. And then you see sweepers come in playing for that breakout. Look at this thing. Can't believe the move. Parabolic, exactly. Parabolic. And that's the problem. That's the problem. There's a lot of stuff that a lot of shit that looks like this. You know, I mentioned the hotels. Like look at look at Marriott. Look at this thing. You know, had a nice 
little consolidation of a monster move. And Marriott, post-election, you had to see some of the missiles this thing caught. A lot of you remember. Missiles! I'm talking about missiles. So you get this move, then you fall. Nice breather here. And look at her ramp right out of that. You know, the hotel names have been unconscious. All right, so Texas Instrument um, was another uh, big bet Friday, but catches earnings, and like I said, comes all the way up here, which is tough. Tough. Uh, Jim is mentioning Skechers. Uh, that had flow, and look at that thing. That had earnings, right? Earnings. Yeah, Connor's saying, how about Boeing? That's the that's the thing, Connor, you know? Like, what do you do with Boeing here? What do you do? You're going to play this thing into earnings off a move like this? You know, is the risk reward in your favor up here? I mean, crazy. IBM, IBM ruined my week. I wanted IBM to sell off off earnings so bad. Um, why? because the sentiment around IBM and earnings was so awful. Two, there was some sweeper act prior to earnings, so I would have been looking for repeat sweepers into weakness, and the total opposite happened, so ruined that trade totally. Uh, kind of what GE, um, a good chunk of us caught GE on Friday. Um, GE, you guys remember, they bought October calls and they got walloped. They got totally run over. They got it wrong. So, and I don't like to, I'm not a big fan of day trading GE. It's honestly, I said Friday, it was probably one of the few times I made decent money on a day trade in GE. Um, but into the selling, GE caught some nice action and continuous action, the type of action you want to see. Right here. So they started early. Look at this. 930 is it. So right there, that's when um, a lot of us into the weakness, into the all. You know, once we saw some sweeper activity come in, you know, we said uh, it was worth the shot intraday. And a lot of times on GE, it's not even that we lose money day trading. It just doesn't move. And to be honest, this thing, you had it was a grind. It was a grind. You had to grind it out. You had to be willing to grind it out. In other words, you, you had to say, all right, I'm going to give this thing a little room, a little, and I'm looking for that capitulative turnaround. Um, and that's exactly what happened there. You can see of a five minute, I'll show you guys. I do that. Whoop. So there was the wash right at the open, and then sweepers came in with some buying, and you had that grind higher throughout the afternoon. So that was a nice one. That was a nice one. Um, but yeah, GE's tough. And they just lost money in it um, playing it. But GE, you know, was tough. All right. All right. Let me get to some of your names because I already see you guys have a lot of nice names there. Um, we'll check some action in. We'll use the wise guy search and we'll throw some uh, charts up just to see. Again, I'm no chartist. The worse a stock looks sometimes, the more I like it. But um, I don't like to chase. So that's my primary use of charts. Um John is saying, nice play in the GEJ. Yeah, that was nice. Thanks. We got lucky with that one. How we're able to make some change. Uh, what else? The C, yeah, this new of GE, a lot of people, a lot of smart money are optimistic about it. They think this could be the worst of it. He's getting everything out there in the open, right? They may even cut the dividend, do what they need to do. Um, and there's a lot of, I mean, listen, as far as capitulation, this is the definition. No, this is the definition. 
okay? It wasn't where we saw that recent flow. That wasn't capitulation. There was some hope there, right? It started to look like maybe it was starting to get some footing. This is, compi this is capitulation. Nobody wanted to own it anymore. They were done with it. So you see some sweeper activity into that. And sometimes it's worth a trade, depending, you know, on you. Uh, Tomer, what are you saying? Tajura, use the brush tool on the left menu, fourth from top. One, two, three. This? Ah, thank you, Mr. Tomer. Yeah, these are my new favorite charts, trading view. I like them. I know a lot of you guys use them. Um, I like them. Uh, by the way, not to jump around, any premium add-on? I know there's a couple premium add-ons here. I mean, they got it. If you like indicators, they got it. You name it, they got it. Um, but I know there's like marketplace add-ons, these thingies. Anything worthwhile? I see a couple there. If you guys see know anything about that, let me know. Um, they're not that expensive. All right. Uh, so IBM we spoke about. Boeing we spoke about a little. Tough here. Um, Connor, again, I don't, I don't know what you do with it. I don't have an opinion. It's been a monster. It's been an absolute monster. Uh, what about any other names? Even listen, don't be. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bark at you. You can throw your um, high beta names at me. Oh, you know what name I'm eyeing? You know what name I'm eyeing? Okay, here's a name of mine. Tesla. I hope. Well, it doesn't even matter, okay? Because I'll be honest with you. If Tesla catches, um, oops, what do I do? I'm drawing them without even meaning to. If Tesla catches some flow, you may even be able to for that quick trade pre-earnings, okay? Um, I'm kind of hoping maybe it doesn't come till after. The hell happened? Till after. I keep doing this till after earnings. You know what I mean? So we get that clean window. Um, We'll see. We'll see. But this is something I'm eyeing because it's frustrating a lot of retail money, right? Everyone looking to catch Tesla just because everything else is up. They want to own Tesla, nothing else. And I like this frustrating little base here if and only if there's legitimate sweeper activity. And there hasn't been. There hasn't been. You know, like, remember you guys were asking me about Tesla up here? I really, there's no edge. There's no edge. You know, the last edge in Tesla of sweepers was down off this. So we're down again. We're not chasing. We got a little bit of a choppy base, frustrating. I like that. Um, you know, overall, this looks like kind of a base, right? Sideways consolidation. So the ingredients are there. The most important thing is missing, and that's aggressive wise guy activity. Um, but Tesla is something I definitely would be interested in. And if you should too, you know, if you were interested in Tesla, um, now is the time where you should be paying attention to sweeper activity. Uh, yeah, it just got downgraded on uh, Friday, a couple houses, but that's music to my ears, Jim. I don't run away from that. That's music to my ears. I remember um, the Micron Goldman downgrade. You remember that? Micron, uh, Goldman downgraded Micron. Oh, my God. What a joke that was. What an animal. By the way, did you guys happen to see the Tepper comment on Micron? via Bloomberg. Anybody catch that? Yeah, Jim is saying it went to 26 um, off that downgrade. 26. She's 42 now. So here's what David Tepper, who in my opinion is the one sweeping those deep in the money missiles that we've been seeing for God knows how long now in this Micron. You know, that's why we refer to them as the Tepper sweeps, those in-the-money sweeps. 
Yes, Young, he said it. Micron could double or triple from these levels. Now he's talking his book. We all know he's extremely bullish. He's in it. He's been in it. He loves the name. Like I said, my opinion, he's the one sweeping the living shit out of it. Um, you know, his crew, his following, whatever. But double or triple from here. Micron. Is that is that even believable is the question. You know, it's hard to believe. Um, but, yeah, I just figured I'd throw that in there. I mean, Tepper is a monster. Come on. Tepper is a Listen, he gets things wrong. Everybody does. But Tepper's, you're not going to, you can't ban out Tepper. Owner, part owner, Pittsburgh Steelers, he's a monster. One of the very few who publicly came out, I remember, in 2009, when the market was falling apart and went all in, literally all in. He's he's pretty solid. Um, all right, so what were we talking about? We were talking about, um, what were we talking about before he went to Micron? Uh, STX, that's an, uh, an interesting name. Another name I was hoping would hold off till after earnings. There's been some clever sweeper activity in this STX. And she had a pop Friday. Um, again, clever. You know, nothing... No, no real standout action, uh, but some under-the-radar clever sweeper activity. And I was hoping would hang around down here until after they report, similar to the IBM. So hopefully, I'm, I'm rooting against STX, Young, for an opportunity, though. I'm rooting against it for an opportunity. Um, IBM, now post earnings, you got to hope for some sort of breather here. And then have the action heat up again. Now a lot of IBM has zero. No, nobody was even near close to owning this thing. Um, huge short position, and that's why you had this reaction. So you want to see some sort of breather if you're interested, and then see the sweeper scoop it up again. Um, just recently, I think it was the day of earnings. The day gapped up. Uh, caught a, a big bet. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, here it is. When did they report? Here? Yeah, here it is. Oh, what I do? What the hell am I doing? All right. So you see that over there? Um, this is a million dollar November bet. 160s and then 11.3 another 300 grand blocks there was some smaller sweeper activity underneath it june look at the size of that bad boy so some um big action there i would wait for a breather me personally at this point you know i know a couple guys in the room who uh took a shot and made a play off that size buying the day of earnings, but at this point, I would I would wait for a breather, me personally. All right, what other names we got? Xilinx, you know, Xilinx caught um, some protection Friday, and it was decent size too. Let me get that for you guys. Hold on. But you know, it could be just protection. Prior to that, has had bull float. So this is the call side action in Xilinx. Last bet, and a, you guys probably remember, we were talking on Twitter about this. December 65s, back early September, 9-7. So that is roughly, oh my God, look where they caught that thing. 9-7, right here. Look at that spot. You see that spot? A little pullback. Look at that. That's a beautiful thing. That's the shit I like. That's the stuff I like, man. 
You guys see that spot? So you had this move. Here's the put action. Uh, you can see no put action for a long time. Look how small this was. That's back in July. Here's the put action on Friday. But again, make too much out of this. It's tough. It's, you know, you look at a name like this off a move like that, off action that basically nailed these lows and up so much since then, and you got some protection coming in. You know, so I, I wouldn't make too much out of that. Uh, we got a trifecta of names. Yeah, some interesting ones. AMD is a must watch off earnings, off of earnings. Um, my gut tells me one of these quarters are going to be the big one as far as AMD is concerned. I don't know which one, but. Um, even if there's weakness, I think it's even more of a watch off weakness, AMD. But AMD has been a great trade, man, has been a great trade. I mean, basically the way we've been playing AMD, and you can see a lot in this chart, just from you back up a step and look, you got these little, and it seems like every time this name catches a little flush, Boom, sweepers. You get a move higher, flush, boom, sweepers. You know what I mean? So earnings are going to get in the way of maybe this little breather getting a trade off that. But they they buy on any little any little weakness they've been buying. So yeah, John's saying once it breaks out of this range, you know, similar to all these names we're seeing. Um, that's when it's probably gone. Yeah, it may be this quarter, man. It may be this quarter. I mean, listen, if you're looking to roll the dice and you want to speculate on some earnings, it may be worth a shot. Um, the majority of the action I've been seeing is out later. A lot of jans, a lot of stuff like that. So I don't, you know, it doesn't really tell me much about this quarter, but a lot of the size has been all been pushed out to then. So that's why I think it's a must watch off the reaction of earnings no matter what. You get weakness, even better. Uh, but yeah, they've been committed to this AMD for a long time now, guys. It started, and those of you who have been with me for a, a long time know exactly what I'm talking about. It started initially with sweeper activity in the leap $2 calls, leap $2 calls when this thing was down here. And I'm about peanuts, I'm talking about monsters, 200,000 contract leap buying. If you, I don't, I don't know, depending on your Twitter thing, if you do a search at Wall Street Jesus, and then you got to use the dollar sign there, AMD. And if you have the time, you're bored. You can, if it allows you to, you can scroll back. You're going to have to go back enough. Let me see if I could, uh, hold on a second. Top, maybe top will get it. Let's see. There was some monsters. Let me see if I could, uh. And you might be able to see the rolls. Hold on. I'll find one of them. Let me see. I just want to show you one of them. You can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, there's been so much action that, I mean, how far back do you got to go here? Let me see. Ah, uh, we're still in the teens. Forget it. But, yeah. If you, if you have the time, you can scroll back. You'll find them. You'll definitely find them. Because one of them, the last one rolled out like 100,000 contracts. 
Yeah, you can see this is at $13. They, they've been committed to this AMD for a while. But it's worth trying to find, and that's why I'm doing it. Because it, uh, it's about, I think it was like a quarter of a million, 250,000 contracts. Contracts. Oh, 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 I found it. Is, oh, no, this is seven and a half. Seven and a half. You know, are these the leaps? Gets tattooed by Bull Sweeper, feeling strong through October. Oh, I thought I found it. A lot of action further out. Like I said, they were leaps. Let me see. Here we go. Oh, no. These are, what, August two and a halves? But you can see two and a half, so it's right around here. I should have just took a screenshot and saved it for there. Oh, God. Shush. All right, I'm back here. I'm not going to waste any more of you guys' time, but if you get a chance, take a look. You'll find it interesting. Stuff to look out for. All right, but, uh, yeah, so AMD, maybe this is the quarter. I'm not sure, but the flow has been there, so it's been solid. Um, Jim is talking about another name. Hang on, Jim, let me get the questions. What did I do with the questions? There we are. Um, what was it now? AMD, what was the other one you mentioned, Jim? Hold on. Yeah, they've been rolling out that position continuously. So they started at the two and a halves, the twos, then the two and a halves, then they went to four, I think it was, then they went up to eight. They just continue to roll. Uh, Avgo and SY, SY, SWKS, yeah, Avgo, um, we know the story there. Uh, big time December action. Some of it was tied. Some of that big action, if you guys remember, was stock replacement. Uh, but still some big action in December. Uh, and you got the same scenario there, pretty much consolidation. Uh, so definitely worth, you know, keeping an eye on. They don't have earnings till later in the year, I think. Right, Jim? And SWKS. Uh, the thing with these things, though, uh, just a heads up, they're tied to Apple. And anytime you get that iPhone news shit, they always seem to get hit off that you know so they're closely tied to apple i'm sure you guys are aware of that uh has been good for the most part but can be bad um swks did they have earnings already yeah the suppliers did swks report oh not yet yeah so we'll see um we'll see what the number looks like you just not to say they all are, but you just got to be careful. You don't run it. Now, this is the total opposite of the spectrum, right? AAOI. Yeah, warned the quarter before and warned again this quarter. You want to make sure there's legitimate flow. And again, the problem, like I said earlier in the webinar, where people force the issue, you don't want to do that um, around earnings season. Now, AALI, if you guys remember, I was getting asked every day about flow. And there was only one bet in AALI that was even worth looking at, let alone a trade. It was this one. Hold on. This on 9.5. And these are expired, okay? Um, but you can see half decent sweep, $160,000 sweep, multiple exchanges, okay? Stock was 57 and change on September 5th. All right, so nothing jaw-dropping as, again, everyone was comparing it to AAOI of the past, right? Comparing it to the time we caught that huge move in it. And just because the name has had a huge move doesn't mean it's always going to have a huge move to the upside. Okay, that was a different animal. You could see the difference in size, 400, 600. You could see more alert, more activity here. Since then, it's been a different animal. Here's the one bet. 
Now that came on 9.5. So it was worthy of a trade. Quite a few people did trade it. Here's 9.5. Look at that spot. All right? So this guy nailed the lows that sweep. October's. September, early September. 57, the stock hit a high of 71. 57 to 71 in literally a week. You know what I mean? That's home run. So I get it. A lot of people may have missed that. Why? Because look where the sweep came in. At the worst time possible emotionally for you. Nobody wanted to buy that. Everybody wants to buy this. Nobody wants to. So this guy nailed the lows. Unbelievable trade. Okay. And while this thing is dancing around here, everybody wants AAOI action, right? Everybody wants it. Because why? Because they missed this move. That's why. And to be honest, you see, this was a weekly play. This expired long ago, gone. There's no action. So if you're going back and you're trying to force wise guy flow behind a name you like and use this bet here that went from 57 to 71 in a week, and you're trying to use that as confidence, you got eaten alive. But there's been no flow. And there's still no flow. There's no buying in this. And like I said, this here was a different animal, guys. This was a different animal. I mean, the AAOI flow back here we were doing cartwheels over. That's how aggressive it was. I'm talking about sweeper after sweep after sweep, missile after missile of that move. You know, that was a monster move. It, what did it do? It doubled. The stock doubled, basically, right? What did it go from 50 to 100? And she's right back down to the 40s. But, you know, so that's the story there. But no flow. And that's what my point being, you don't want to force, you don't want to just make it up to make you feel better about a trade. If there's no flow or there's nothing spectacular about flow, then there's nothing spectacular about flow. Uh, Sean saying, Jesus, do you think it's worth to look weekly options for intraday action? Yeah, Sean. Listen, weeklies, I'm not you just got to understand what you're trying to do with weeklies. You understand? That's all. That's my point. What I'm saying is a lot of traders get caught in between, okay? They're looking for the big move in weeklies. So they, you know, they want everything. They want to catch a big move, and they don't want to pay for the time to catch it. You're, so when you do that, you're already behind the eight ball. My opinion, if you're playing weeklies, like Sean mentioned, you should be looking for that quick move. If you catch a big move, you stepped in shit, say thank you, and move on. If you, got, if you were fortunate enough to be involved in something that exploded, okay? So in other, in other words, again, just using a hypothetical, if you, play, um, if you played a doli and you were utilizing weeklies, looking for the quick flip off the action, right? You bought Adobe, you're looking to get rid of them the next day. And you got lucky and caught this? You got lucky and caught this, that's great. Don't try to orchestrate a game plan. Now, everything you buy weeklies, you're looking for this type of moving. You got lucky. But yeah, I could definitely see where weeklies can be part of your arsenal. And the other thing too, Sean, and it's good too, there's there's a positive in, in an approach to weeklies. 
a lot of times weeklies are cheap, right? Your stop loss very easily is what you put into those weeklies. So it's easy to manage your risk. That's a good thing. Just understand that that's what you're doing. So in other words, you're willing, you're looking to you're willing to lose two grand on a trade, you know, you're looking for Adobe, you're looking for the quick hit, and you're willing to lose two grand, you're putting two grand into the thing. Well, I'm gonna put twenty grand, but if I'm down two grand, I'm gonna pull the plug. You know, it's not possible. <clears throat> it's not possible. So they definitely, 100% Sean, they definitely have their use. You just got to use them the right way, that's all. But I'm sure you know that. You know that. Um, a good example of what we've been talking about, I saw somebody mention the name. Again with the JD, okay? You guys remember, this was the example for last week's webinar. You remember that? It happened again this week. I'm willing to bet money even after the webinar. People got caught in the middle again. What do I mean by that? You remember last week what we were talking about with JD? Caught some action, spec action, front month action. I think it was two weeks out, whatever the case may be. Looking for the quick hit. So, Sean, here's a good example of where, let's say, you want to utilize weeklies. JD catches that type of action. You're looking to get in because the sweepers are telling you there's possible short-term momentum coming. The interpretation of the sweeper activity in JD wasn't, JD's going to new highs in a week. That's not what, that's not how you read that flow. You know what I mean? Uh, Eddie's saying no sound. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, Eddie, it's on your end. I've been talking for hours here. Um, so, again, the read off the JD sweepers wasn't that the stock is going to be at new highs in a week or two. It was that there's possible short-term momentum coming in for you to get a quick short-term trade out of. That's what happened. If you were looking for more or didn't at least take some profit, roll a stop, whatever protective measures you're going to use if you're not going to take that short-term profit, if you didn't do that, you got washed. So what happened? Saturday, last Saturday in the webinar, we spoke about that and we used that as an example. And we spoke about how they did it again. They came in Friday in JD, aggressively speculating on some October calls that expire Friday, the following Friday. So the interpretation of that action was they were looking for a quick move in JD at some point next week. And what happened? They caught Baron News Saturday that JD is the better. What a coinky dink. And the stock was up very nicely Monday morning. Monday morning. Okay. Then you had a little bit of a pullback, and the stock went higher the following day. Wednesday, I think it was. And on Wednesday, I don't know if you guys probably saw me post, they rolled out those calls. Okay, they shut down the October, November. So, but the same thing, if you guys were looking for a bigger move in weeklies, you got caught, and now you gave up what you should have been looking for in that trade. That's getting caught in the middle. You know, and the reason why I'm, I'm even mentioning this now is because if you're using and trying to utilize weeklies and two weeks out, okay, this is what you should be planning for. Anything beyond that, in my opinion, is luck. 
I know it sounds ridiculous, but look, you catch a little news, maybe the market gets hot. There's a variety of reasons it could push hot. But this is what you're playing for when you play weeklies. You look for more than that. You want, you think you're, uh, you know, some guru out there that can predict big things for a stock inside a couple of days, and you want to trade that way, um, that's on you. Flow's not going to help you. Nothing's going to help you. I just want to make that point. But, Sean, you know, um, I know just by talking to you in the past, you know what the hell you're doing. And, yes, of course, weeklies, two weeks out, they have their use. Um, do you say rolling call out is important? Yeah, yeah, because you got to understand. And, and JD is one name in particular, using that example. One of the rare times they didn't take much of any profit on that. So in other words, what they did is they just pushed out the October calls to November for more. A lot of times when these guys roll, they pay themselves. That's their form. I like to call it the, the short money, the short money's form of profit taking. That's what they do with size. They rarely sell everything at one spot. They roll and they roll and they roll. That's how they ride these trends higher. Okay, we spoke about that. We could hold a whole webinar about that. They're willing to give up the last batch, that last position. They're willing for that to go under to catch the bigger trend. That's the risk reward there. They're willing to do that. A lot of you guys, all of you guys aren't willing to do that. So when they roll, you got to understand, they're locking in some profit. Does that mean the stock is... Going to go south right off that? No. Okay, but you, at least you understand this is not fresh action. Yes, they're still bullish, but they're taking some chips off the table. That's what you should be doing too at that point if it was a shorter term trade. You know, so just these are things to understand. And that, that's why you got to understand too with flow. You can't, like you see a lot of people on social media especially, they just like to mimic orders, right? They see some big order and they think just by looking at, at think or swim the trades going off, time and sales, that some big order means they should take action on something. I mean, I just showed you the big orders that we looked at from Friday. 99% of this stuff, I have no interest in. This is just the stuff I'm looking at. Just the stuff I was looking at. This is not taking into the equation all the other call buyers out there on Friday. Yeah, so it goes to show you, again, the, the thing we looked at in regards to um, Adobe MTN. On a day where there was a ton of coal buying all over the place, these were the three names here. That only that meant something to me. Nothing else. And there was action all over the damn place. Because again, some of it was players rolling positions. They were taking profit. Some of it, a lot of it tied to stock these days going into earnings. So in other words, a player is buying 10,000 XYZ but he's selling 100,000 shares worth. That's not aggressive. Not in my eyes. If that guy was super bullish, all bulled up, would he be dumping equity? Right? We want that degenerate flow. When the smart money acts like we would, like a degenerate, that's what we want to look for. He's not. If we were all junked up, and confident that something was going to run, are we going to sell some equity to buy some calls and have less principal at risk? No, we don't give a shit how much principal we have at risk because we feel like this is going to go. AKA Adobe. Right? This guy acted like he had a newspaper in his hand. He 
pretty much swept the bottom here. Had nice cushion, nice profits. Could have easily just stuck with that. Rolled them out. The first dip he sees, he sweeps it again. Hey, nice bounce. Comes off a little at the end of the day. The following day, they sell it off right in his face again. Right? You would think, oh, maybe he's concerned. Yeah, maybe this trade's not working. Maybe I should give it a little more time. Maybe I'll come in a little bit more. No, 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 no. Hit it again. You think he wasn't playing for this? So that's what I'm saying. There wasn't one order here. It wasn't one buyer here. That's not what made Adobe special. It wasn't one big order. It was the way he went about buying this shit that gave the impression that he knew something or felt confident about something that we don't know. No chart is going to show you that. Nothing's going to show you that. That's the beauty of flow in real time. The problem is, is not, you know, think about the percentages. Of all the flow that's out there, you know how much call buying is out there, guys? Do you realize how much call buying, put buying is out there on a day-to-day -day basis? You know, people talk about the market, right? About the volume in the market, how abysmal it's been. Meanwhile, the volume in the options market is through the roof. So that's the beauty of flow. You see it in real time. You see how these players are positioning. One order, you know, could mean a, a gazillion different things. And, and we have the luxury with the proper technology of knowing, you know, when a stock is tied. I mean, when a, when a, a, a size call buyer is tied to stock when a guy is rolling, right? This day and age with technology, we have the software we can pick up on those things. But you, you can't just pull off think or swim size call buyers and think you have inside information. Don't ask me how I got into that rant. But you, you see, I like to get in... That's calm. coming off a Yankee loss. You got to understand where I'm coming from. All right? Coming off a tough Yankee loss. I got game seven on my hands. I don't need this shit. Uh, what do we got? Jim, Home Depot, I haven't really seen too much uh, there to really pique my, uh, my interest. Uh, Home Depot could get size. I know Caterpillar reports... Caterpillar, I tell you, Caterpillar's one, that was a nice one. Look at this shit. Excuse my French. Caterpillar, this uh, Febs, that's the most recent bet, 1016. These expired. Look at the size of these things. These expired. Yeah, a lot of this stuff expired now. So you're really Caterpillar going in. This is the only thing. And they had some rolls, but you had um, Fed buying. But, you know, like, look at the, just look where they started here. Going back to under $100 on this Caterpillar. What an animal. What an animal. Uh, yeah, so Home Depot, I haven't really seen much. Let me see in the search. Not even I, smaller sweeper ones. I think Lowe's had a little bit of action. Let's see Home Depot here. Home Depot. That ex nothing. These all expired here. When do they report, Jim? Home Depot. Do you know? Um, you know what's been a nice little name? I think a couple of you guys uh, know it. I remember mentioning it to you guys the last time you guys know it. This USG has been a nice little name. Anybody in this USG off the action? 
I don't know if you're still in it. Uh, but they make um, uh, not concrete. What do they make again? For building purposes. It was a hurricane play. Sheetrock. Sheetrock. USG. Had a nice move. Had action um, pre-hurricanes and had a nice ramp and then breather right into the breather caught a sharp looking I think it was Feb sweeper pretty good looking though and had a nice move higher a lot of names like this a lot of you know the low key names um oh drywall yeah drywall yep uh Jimmy saying Chanos has been short cat well he's I don't I give that guy credit, man. And that's what I mean. Like, you, some of you guys want to short the market? Seriously? Some of you guys want to short in bull markets? Have you lost your minds completely? That guy is as sharp as any dude out there. And you'll hear nightmarish stories, Chanos. N nightmares. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. I don't know how he does it. So you're talking about one of the sharpest players on the street. Okay, look at his short positions and what they're doing to him. And you guys want a short? You need your head examined. You guys need your head examined. He short Baba, right? He was short Baba. Uh, Jim is saying he's short Caterpillar. I know a lot of the China stuff, right? Jeez. Tough. Uh, what else? I'm trying to think of some names. Oh. All right, so here's the names to keep an eye on, um, quality flow-wise. Okay, that's the most important. I've been trying to do a better job for members, even though it doesn't matter. No, you know what it is? Like, can I be honest with you guys? I've realized, and again, it's new to me. Like the steam room, I never did anything like that before. I dealt with clients, which is a lot worse. Okay, but when I realized, I was, I became so concerned with traders trying to find success where no matter how hard I try it doesn't it doesn't matter there's going to be a select group of people who want to do what they need to do to find success and the rest just want to do what they want to do they want to they want to make money but they, they're still going to do what they want to do and there's as much as you try you're not going to help them you know what I mean? Like if it was up to me, you see this board? If it was up to me, would never show put buying until I felt it was the right time. Okay? Now, put buying has its use. It has its use. Definitely does in bull markets. Okay? And I know a lot of seasoned professional traders in the room who would go nuts if I eliminated the put line. But I know it's the it ruins. It will it ruins traders. Like, believe it or not, you see how I talk? You see how I speak about being short in bull markets and puts and all this stuff? There's still some guys in the room short. Not all flow. And there have been a handful of people who have joined and ignore whatever I say, obviously, and were caught short in this bull market and are no longer members. Like, think about that. They signed up. They paid. Heard me rant about shorts like I do every Saturday with you guys and still shorted. They're no longer members, but there's still that group. So, I, you know, the point of the story is I realized that, you know, I was really trying to make it my business, like trying to evaluate myself and say, maybe I'm not doing a good enough, maybe I'm not doing a good enough job as far as pushing out there what action these guys should be focusing on. You know, maybe I'm not as loud as I should be 
about the Adobe MTN WRK on a day like this? You know, maybe this is not enough. Now, this is just private Twitter. I'm on audio, video all day, not shutting up about this shit. Then we do a recap after the market closes and not short, you know, I, I talk about the solid action throughout the day. So, but I realize it's, it, there's nothing I can do. Players are just, there's players that just are going to ignore this shit and want to focus on, you know, the, the Facebook constantly, no matter what. The NVIDIA constantly. Jesus, any NVIDIA sweepers? Jesus, any NVIDIA sweepers today? Jesus. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's nothing I can do. So anyway, what I'm trying to get at is uh, some of the better action out there. There's one, like... Here's how I, you got top shelf action, okay? Top shelf is Adobe MTN. That's top shelf. Um, there are other names. They're all gone. They're all gone, okay? The only top shelf name left is that um, biotech thing, GBT. That's it. Those are March calls. So there's a lot of time there. All right. Aside from that, then you got another level of decent spec action out there. Okay. It's not necessarily sharp activity, but it's better than some of the other action. Um, then you got some under the radar names, some of the under the radar names. I mentioned to you guys that ZTO, uh, this is a Chinese name. Uh, we found out that they are the UPS FedEx for BABA and JD and caught some decent size, unusual, strange activity in Jan strikes. All right, so this is what she looks like. Cheap stock, 15 and change. Uh, that's one still out there, you know, fairly new, hasn't really moved yet. Uh, what else was there? Oh, you have this uh, IPO Roku that has seen um, decent activity. If they come back again early next week, I think you have even uh, a stronger single signal there. Uh, we had a nice day trade out of this Thursday. Uh, they came aggressively. They came aggressively after uh, calls on Thursday. A chunk of it didn't catch earnings, and um, we had a real nice day trade out of it. Oh, here they are. That's what they scooped up on Thursday. So this is next week. So this is something to keep an eye on next week, especially if they come again. If they come again, a lot of times they haven't been coming again in these things, but if they come again, it's worth. Um, it's definitely worth an eye. Probably worth, probably worth a look already. They have earnings in November, I think it is. So you can see here, 2,400 to 23 calls, November's, uh, these expired, that was that day. And um, here's the way they came after it. Yeah, I started off small sweep, and then you could see the action after that that came in and had a nice, real nice move. Um, I don't know if you can see it on here. Let me see if I go to five minute. You might be able to. Yeah, I think they have, this was it here. This is a five minute, so it looks a little more compressed. But so they came in here, and then you got boop, 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 nice and quick. Real nice move. Stock ran like a buck. Um, then faded, and then had a little bit of action on Friday. I think it was right here on Friday. So one to keep an eye on, Roku, R-O-K-U, and ZTO. I don't know. I don't think they're going to come back for the ZTO. There's, it's always possible, 
If they do, forget it. That would be an incredible sign. Um, but, you know, the ZTO was worth a look anyhow. It has a sexy story behind it. Right? The FedEx of Baba. You can see the Momos looking to get behind that. Um, and that's it, really. Really. There's nothing really, you know, as far as non-earnings related, we have the bank flow, which we talk about every day. Uh, that's not initial activity. I told you, J.P. Morgan, you have uh, not for this week, the following week, November 5, November 5th, the 105 calls that they were uh, chasing a bit. Let me get JPM. So the banks are still hot. Maybe you get a little bit of a breather there early next week and can set up, you know, it's not, again, not a high probability trade because it's moved. Uh, where are they here? This is Fridays. November 10th. Oh, I'm sorry, 106 calls. What I think they were 105. 106. Where'd they pay? They were really cheap. Oh, yeah, here's the one. Seven cents. These, they're paying a nickel. You know, spec action. So, uh, just if you guys remember, you don't have to play these per se. You know, you can just, especially that. Activity, you could just use this as a gauge that they feel like there's still going to be juice in the banks in the foreseeable future, you know? So if you get an intraday dip and you get some sweeper activity, could set up a short-term trade. You know, it just tells you they're still in play rather than the, the buying dry up. Uh, John is saying CTO, Bob and JD, right? Yeah. That's what I read. I posted it on Twitter. I got it off CNBC. They um, they ship for Baba and JD. Uh, any last questions before we go here? Can you look at a name with short flow that didn't work? I'll give you one. Yes. We went up a little, then it just got taken down because the sector did because. Here's the thing, it, in my opinion, again, it did work and will work, and here's what I'll tell you. All right, let me show you exactly. So, well, I'll go back to the flow, so you don't have to take my word for it. SGMS, ton of activity, okay? We spoke about, I'll show you in the filter, throughout this move whole entire move, okay? Then you had this big reaction here, right? So, like I said, you don't want to chase this. You want to wait. You need a breather. And then you want the call action to dry up. And then the first sign that sweepers may be getting back in sets up another trade opportunity, possibly. Okay? Because, again, this is not initial activity. This is repeat activity. But if you're looking for another entry, you need consolidation. Okay. We saw some sweeper activity come in off this consolidation with the IGT. Remember the IGT? Same name in the group. IGT actually had better action at that time. All right? Then they both got hot. All right? Then here... This is what Jim is talking about. We saw the 2018 repeat leap action. Okay, they're 2019 calls, but they were sharp as razor blades. And around that, there were smaller, shorter-term sweeps. Okay, I could probably find it for you guys if you need it, but you guys probably remember it. So now, you had leap buying 2019 and shorter term sweeps around it. So there were two ways to play it. You're looking for the big enchilada. You got to try to make a play around those leaps. Okay, that's where the sharp play is. You got to understand that this thing may come in. Look at this thing. It done. It did it here. And... They were buying leaps back then, too. They've been buying leaps in this thing continuously. 
all right? Or you want to make a short-term play on it? You're looking just to capitalize off short-term momentum? You can make a short-term play on it. You actually got a short-term trade out of it. Now, you can tell me this wasn't enough for you. Okay, that's a different story. But you have to, there's got to be some sort of risk management around that. In other words, you're playing, I think they were Octobers, if I'm not mistaken, the calls they played, the shorter term stuff. If you're playing Octobers and this is not enough and you get caught in this, you know, you got to be willing for those things to go to, that's your stop loss, or you got to stop yourself at it at some point. Little thing, we were talking with JD. You know, in my opinion, this is enough for a short-term trade. It may not be for you, but you have to plan accordingly if it's not. And now we just, again, like Jim mentioned, the sector, everything just had a, a breather here. You know, if you look at IGT, I think it looks the same. Yeah, see? Yeah, these things, IGT is nowhere near as hot as SGMS, but the whole group came in a little bit. I did hear, Jim, it was something uh, to the effect, some Italy news, I don't know, regarding lottery or something. Um, that's what I heard. Don't hold me to it. I'm not sure. Um, I wouldn't worry about it. You know? So that's, that's, that's the way you need to look at it from that point. Now, here, you want, after you see this poll, let's say you bought some leaps, or let's say you were looking for a pullback to buy to make a play on this, okay? The flow that came, you were looking for flow to come in off this. The flow that came in was this. But again, look where they went. April. So, you know, they, and guys, this is the smart thing. All the good looking action in this thing is going to come with time at this point. Why? Because look at the move, man. Look at this. You know? And like I said, there's been action all over this thing throughout this move. So it's not like it's initial activity up here. This is just repeat action, but it's good-looking action. Like, this is a good-looking bet. Uh, you got earnings 1026. You can see I posted that here. So that's what I would eye. And if there's weakness, I'm sure they're going to come in scooping things up. Um, here was the action Jim was referring to. Oh, no, no, this is they're adding to 2019. It's not going, see what I mean with this Twitter thing? It doesn't go back. But look, I'll get it off the thing for you, just in case you're wondering. But yeah, this symbol I think you keep on your screens. Um, and it's something, you know, if you're looking to catch the, the big move, you need time. Obviously, they're 2019 calls. You need time and you, um, you could always add on dips. So look, here's the action off the board. So you guys can make sense out of it. All right. This is gone. Expired. September. Um, oh, wrong way. I'm sorry. These are the Aprils. Here's the Jans. Okay. Octobers. This is the play, Jim, that I was telling you, you could have made a play off the short term. It was small. It was worth, with the leaps, a quick trade. But that's it. You know, then look, you go back leaps. Look at this. Four million. When the stock was twenty-eight in July. Oh no, stock was thirty-seven in July. In July. Thirty-seven. That was like ten points ago. Where is it? Here. That was before this move. Or after it. One or the other. Um but look, see if you keep going back, look at this. Twenty look at this bet. Look at these bets. It was 25 here, Jim. 3 million bucks. 
leaps. 25 the stock was. Now, look, I'm not done, Jim. June, stock was 23. Look at the size of these things. Crazy, no? They bought Jan's 25s. The stock was 23, two and a half million. These, this is Jan 2019. These are, uh, oh no, that might be. But anyway, you get what I'm saying here. You know, look, in the teens, you had trades going low. So she's come a long way, but what caught my eye was this bet. This is wrong. There's a, there's a quirk in the board for some reason with 2019. This is Jan 2019 right here. Um, this was the leap buyer. You know? So that's, you can see the action just continuing here. And you know, it tells you a lot about how strong this name is. So there's dips along the way. I would not let them phase you if you're looking to play this name. I think the dips are what you should be looking for um, if you're looking to make a play on the leaps, you know, but you got to understand you need time. You know, see this, this is what came off the short-term reaction. And listen, I get it if this wasn't enough. Um, sometimes you get more, sometimes you don't, but I wouldn't let this little faith. This doesn't tell me anything different. You know, same thing happened here. It exploded. Look at this. This thing looked like it was ready to break down before this. Yeah, it's done it throughout. Yeah, big bets, Jim. There's some big action there. Again, I don't know. See, the action initially, when I saw this action come in initially back here, I was almost swearing there was activists involved, the way that action looked. It looked to me like there was an activist getting involved. You know, so now they're coming again up at higher levels and still firing doozies at this thing. You know, even that April bet, that's not too shabby there, that April bet. That's a half a million dollar bet right there for this name. On what was it, Friday, Thursday? One of those days. Oh, the option price? Yeah, probably. You're probably right. You're probably right. You know, I'm not listen, I'm not saying you're lying. I wouldn't say that. I'm just saying that it's totally normal. You know what I mean? It's totally normal um, based off that action because, again, you know, the, the short-term stuff wasn't anything significant. It just came in with the leaps. You know, with if you take the leaps out of the equation, you know, you had a small sweeper there, that's all. But all in all, um, you know, all together was nice action. All right, anybody else have any names? But definitely keep an eye on this SGMS. You got earnings here are coming up, like I said, so definitely worth an eye then. I got 1026 earnings. Probably probably off the earnings, Jim will be up like 15. <laughs> Ruin everybody's life. Unless you're in the leaps. Now, listen, honestly, if you're looking to make a play on the leaps, it doesn't hurt to put in a little piece now. You know, it doesn't hurt to start an initial position off this pullback, and then as long as you're willing to add. Is that what they are? Huh, no wonder. You know, as long as you're willing to add, there's nothing wrong with starting um, a longer-term position off this little pullback. And if earnings, you get, you know, any more of a pullback, you use that as an opportunity to own more. If not, at least you got a piece if this thing happens to go. Uh, Brent's asking about that Netflix call spread the day of earnings. Brent, it's hard to know whether that comes from anything else. You know what I mean? In other words, there was some profit taking the day of earnings, as you would expect. How do we know somebody didn't roll out of a bullish position and go into call spreads? You follow? So for me, Netflix, 
you need to see a, a sustained breather here and then the action pick up again. Sort of like we got here. Doesn't have to be a, a pull, but you need at least a couple weeks and then the sweeper activity start to heat up again. Uh, because it's too noisy. You know what I mean, Brent? With earnings, you had all that bullish action prior to earnings. It's just too noisy. You don't know where it's coming from. You know, they could be moving positions around. That's all. You know, somebody who bought down here said, you know what? I'm locking up my position. I'm going to roll out some to December call, uh, call spreads. Yeah, so, you know, you just you wanted to calm down a little bit. Like a good example of that kind of is the Tesla. And you wanted to chop around, frustrate some people, quiet down, and then all of a sudden, you like for example, let's say let's take earnings out of the equation. Tesla, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Tuesday morning, we start to see aggressive sweepers firing at this thing, right? You see one guy December's, then you see another good-looking Jan sweep, then another one. Yeah, that's. Now you sense something different going on to what we've been seeing, right? This thing has been really quiet, like really quiet. The, we seen, I think the biggest or the best looking order we've seen in Tesla was like options expiring the same day. And you're talking about peanuts. So there's been nothing there. You want to see a good looking sweep. You want to see a good looking opening sweep at least one, if not more, um, but it'll be noticeable. It'll be no, it, like I said, you don't have to force it. When you're searching for the flow, that's when you get in trouble. Let the flow come to you. It smacks you in the head. Pretty obvious. Pretty obvious when they want something. You know, you don't have to go looking for it. Like you'll never have to ask me if you're a member, you'll never have to ask me are they buying it? You'll know. You know, like all you guys who are members, you knew they were buying Adobe, right? I mean, unless you just weren't paying attention on those particular days, you, it was pretty evident. You know, Adobe's not Facebook, Apple. Adobe doesn't catch flow like that. Like here, here here's a good example. Ready? And we'll wrap things up. Look at Adobe. There's the action on the whole board. There's nothing even to scroll back on. There's your Adobe action. Like that doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. You understand what I'm saying? Like here's Facebook, right? You keep going and going and going and going. You could go on for ages upon ages in Facebook. And Adobe, boop. so you know it, it. It was obvious. You didn't have to ask me or search or do any. Adobe was obvious. Somebody wanted Adobe. So that that's what I mean. That's the point I, I want to make. That if you're paying attention, you'll you'll notice it. You know, like even Tesla, maybe he catches a small sweeper or two, you know, and you're not sure. Yeah, maybe you're not sure there. But if they continue to come after it, you will be. So if you're not sure, it's maybe it's not enough action. Let them keep coming. All right, boys and girls, I always appreciate you coming out on a Saturday. I do. I wanted to make that clear so you guys know. All right. Um, if you have any questions or anything, you know where to find me. You could go to wallstreetjesus.com if you're new. Uh, we got a couple cool things going on if you're interested. One, it's the trial if you're new and you never tested us out. Um, you could pretty much have access to everything. The only thing you don't have access to is private and to public. But you could get a good idea of what we do. Three days. All right. Um, also, if you are interested, we got 50% off the first month that you get everything, 
access to the room, to the search, live feed, I'm on all day long talking about the flow as it comes in in real time. All right, so um, that's the biggest perk to it all there. If you have any questions, you can let me know right there and then. Uh, you got the filter as well. This is just my commentary on the flow and stuff. So basically you don't uh, have to sift through other people's comments. Uh, and then again, you have the search feature uh, where you can look up all the action. Uh, once you do sign up, you get access to this. This is private Twitter. All right. Uh, that's included in your membership. If you're interested in just private Twitter, we have spun that off now. You can get that in a separate entity. You scroll to the bottom of Wall Street Jesus. Uh, for basically 60 bucks. you have access to that. That's all the action in real time uh, with some sentiment and open interest stuff. Um, obviously, you don't have access to the room. Okay. Uh, but again, a, a good way to get a feel for the flow if you have a strategy and stuff like that. Uh, also, Lucci has a lot of educational stuff coming out. He's doing a real hands-on program with how he uses flow. Like Lucci's basically, a, he reads tape, okay? And he likes to look at options tape. So a lot of times he'll see flow coming in and he's looking at the actual tape and sees them you know, taking out offers when they're sweeping aggressively and stuff like that. So he's got a, a thing now where he's showing you he how he trades and ties that together. Uh, Lucci trades a totally different way than I trade or traded, um, and that's the beauty of it. I mean, flow you can use in so many ways. All right, I don't have the link. I thought the link would be on here. If you need the link, you can hit up Lucci or I, um, and I'll shoot out the link to the course. Okay, I think it's a lot with sessions and stuff like that. Wouldn't it be on here? I thought it was. Oh, here it is. My bad. So basically, you go to WallStreetJesus.com, go to products. Here's the course. Let me put the link in there for you guys. How do I do this? Send call. All right, guys. But again, any questions? Um, you hit me up, Lucci. I'll answer them. WallStreetJesus.com is where you can if you need to find out. Even here, strategy, you click on the strategy tab. We got cool write-ups on how I day trade off it, showing you examples. Uh, what's a sweep from the basic questions to some a little more stuff in depth. Uh, these are all recorded. These webinars are recorded. I, I tweet them out. Lucci tweets them out. And you could go on the same Lucci YouTube channel to find them all once they get posted. All right. All right, guys. Enjoy your Saturday. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Root for those Yankees. I don't know if I'm feeling too strong about it tonight, but um, I'm happy either way. Solid season. But root, root those Yankees home for me, will you? Enjoy the weekend, guys.